Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see everybody here this morning. Um, welcome to Strain on this, our family service. Uh, so today, because it's a family service, obviously Sunday school is not on, so the boys and girls will be staying with us this morning in church. And as I talk to us all this morning, hopefully everyone will, um, will understand what I'm saying. We'll all be able to engage together and worship together as a church family. So welcome this morning, just as we gather here um, on Sunday morning. A um, number of announcements this morning. I'm sort of fighting with bits of paper this morning. Uh, so bear with me while I go through these. So, so I don't forget to do this. Let's do the birthday spot first of all, shall we? Let's do the birthday blessings. So we have a number of birthdays coming up this week. Um, so even starting from today, right the way through to later on in the week, we have Graham Cairns. We have Ryan Young, we have Jean Ross, we have Stephanie Barron, and we've also got somebody called Jeff McWaters as well. So happy birthday to everybody for this week. Let's pause, let's pray. Father, thank you again for being a family. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for your blessings. And Lord, as we celebrate birthdays this week, we, we thank you and ask for your blessings upon Graham and Ryan and Jean and Stephanie, and just, Lord, be with them, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Um, hopefully, you as we've been coming in this morning, the announcements on the screen this evening. I know it said on the slide next Sunday, but it's, you felt it was actually on for this evening. So for any of our young folks, please do come on down um, to that later on. Um, just to say as well that small groups start back again this week. So our small groups work by the pattern of meeting on a Wednesday and evening and on a Friday lunchtime every other week, um, the second and the fourth weeks of the month. And we are going to start a new topic. Somebody asked me about the topic of heaven. And um, in a moment of madness, I said, yes, let's study heaven. And then I started to realize what I signed up to. <laughs> so but it'll be interesting. It will be a challenging study. But it's something that so often we don't look at. We know about heaven, but what is heaven? Where is heaven? What, what does that word heaven mean? As, as we look at it in the Bible, what does it say to us? What does it speak to us about? So we're going to be starting that this week. So if you'd like to come along on Wednesday evening at half seven, or if you'd like to come along on Friday lunchtime at half twelve, you'd be very welcome to do so. Um, you may never have done um, small groups before. That's fine. Come along and join us for it. And you don't have to do anything in advance, and you'll not be asked to do anything. You'll not be asked to say or speak. If you don't want to, you can simply listen. Um, but if you'd like to, please come along and join us for that. Thursday, we have our drop-off for Food Bank um, from 10 until 12. Um, they're looking for, in particular, pasta meat, pies, tinned rice, custards, packet rice, brown sauce, and tomato ketchup. All the essentials. Um, so if you'd like to buy anything along those lines, or if you've got something else you'd like to drop off, you can if you're down um, this week at BB or GB or any other event, you can drop it off. But the other time is on Thursday morning from 10 till 12. And again, if you've got any church envelopes, you can drop them off also. Um, there is a Christian Aid quiz on Friday evening. Um, it's going to be done by Zoom. Uh, so maybe it might be a bit easier this year if it's done by Zoom. Not that I would condone cheating, but, you know, whenever you're, you're sitting there and you're doing it on Zoom, may, maybe somebody might have a phone to one side to Google some questions to see how, who, who's the quickest Googler. Uh, but, yes, there's the Christian Aid quiz on Friday evening. So if you want to sign up for that, um, you can contact the church office. You can have a chat to Helen Schofield. Um, we do have the details. or give myself a shout as well. Um, the other really important announcement for this morning and the one that's been anticipated for a while is youth club youth club is starting again it's going to be a slightly different start and different approach um so if you'd like to know some more details about that um talk to stephen wilson or talk to myself um again from p6 up to year 10 uh, and we're starting off small first of all internally with church and then working out from there but if you'd like some more details i like can know how it'll work please have a word with stephen have a word with myself We'll point you in the right direction. Two more announcements. Sorry, I am wittering on this morning, but these are very, very important. This next one in particular is very important. 
I am sure we have all been watching the rules and regulations with regards to social distancing and how they have been changing. Um, and if you've been watching the news or watching the local news or listening to it about how a number of the churches um, were making announcements, PCI were unusually quiet in relation to this and hadn't said anything because they were allowing sessions to meet together, first of all, to discuss uh, and to see if they were in agreement or, or where they wanted to be. So we met this morning. So there are some changes happening from next Sunday. So please, I'd ask you to listen carefully. From next Sunday, uh, the need for social distancing within the pews um, will be gone. So for most of the church area, the red tapes which you see around you will no longer be there. What we will do is down this side of church and down in this transept here, we will keep that tape in place for anybody who does wish to still have that little bit of social distance. So if, if that's your desire, that is the area where we will, we will have that. Um, face masks, we would ask you please still to keep face masks on as you come into the building and as you leave the building. But once you're actually in the pew, it will be up to yourself whether you retain the mask or whether you take it off. Hand sanitizer will continue to be available at all entrances and we would encourage you and ask you please as you come in to sanitize your hands. Um, the one-way system will be removed so you will be able to come in from church from the front from the vestibule or from the welcome area again as we did in the past before uh, but those hand sanitizing stations will remain in place. So please just be aware of that from next Sunday. Now, a really special announcement. Each week, we are reminded that we are a family here in Strain. We worship together in person and online, and we serve together in various aspects of church life. We know, however, that there comes a time when how we serve God can and does change. For those who are called to be elders, there comes a time to slow down a bit and to move to the position of elder emeritus, a position, a position granted by presbytery. This means that an elder will still step back from the duties of having a, a district to look after. They don't vote in decisions of session and they are released from the responsibility of being a trustee of the church charity. That time has come for three of our elders and at their requests, their names have been brought to presbytery and they have been elevated, as we say, to the position of Elder Emeritus. These elders are Tommy Scott, Bill McKenzie and George McCulloch. George was installed as an elder on the 25th of April, 1982. Tommy was installed on the 11th of December, 1988 and Bill was installed on the 25th of June, 2006. Our session have been so blessed by Tommy, Bill and George for how they have faithfully served and assisted in church. And we know that they will continue to assist. And we want to acknowledge publicly their dedication to this church and to God and to thank them for it. We pray that God would continue to bless Tommy, Bill and George and their families and that they would know God's presence with them and his refreshment in their lives. Those three elders are, are not with us here in person this morning as they didn't want to create a fuss or make it about them. They have humble servant hearts but we want to thank them for how they have served God here in Strain and to encourage them and to continue as they continue to serve in different ways and to assure them of our prayers for themselves and their families in the days that lie ahead. So hopefully they might be watching online or they may listen to this service later on on CD. So let's thank them for what they've done.
let us pray for Tommy, George and Billy. Father, we thank you for how you call us to serve you in different ways. And Father, there's so many different aspects in which we serve in church. For, for George and Bill and Tommy, they have served in various church and various committees. But Lord, they served on the eldership. Uh, they have brought wisdom. They have brought stability. They have, they have just brought that sense of your presence. And Lord, for that, we are so grateful and so thankful. Lord, we will miss them in our session meetings. We will miss them in those dis- discussions. But we would ask that they, at this time, would just know that sense of being able to step back a little bit to know peace, to know rest, but more importantly, just to know that continued sense of presence and blessing. So Lord, thank you for that service of Tommy, Bill, and George. Bless them, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Sorry that I took so long with the announcements this morning. It's just one of those Sundays when everything comes at once. Boys and girls, in a moment, we're going to sing a a golden oldie hymn. It'll be one that probably most of you have never heard of. But this is a family service. So I'm trying to engage with everybody in the service this morning. So this one, boys and girls, so apologies that you may not know it. But hopefully the mums and dads, the grannies and grandmas, the other folks who are here might remember learning it themselves as a child. Uh, And they're wonderful words. As we sing later on in the service, there'll be some other pieces that you will know as well. But this morning, boys and girls and adults, we come to worship God. We come to acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. You know, I love those words that we find in Philippians chapter 2, which say that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This morning's not about us, but it's about God and what he has done for us. So let me read you these words, which we will sing in a moment. I love to hear the story which angel voices tell, how once the king of glory came down on earth to dwell. I am both weak and sinful, but this I surely know. The Lord came down to save me because he loved me so. We sing these words to worship God, to honor Christ, to say that we know how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how much he has done for us. So let us stand together and sing the words of this hymn written by a lady from 1833. I love to hear the story.
us pray. Father, thank you that we are here this morning because you love us so. Thank you that we can sing because you love us, that we can worship because you love us. Lord, just thank you for everything that you have done for us. You gave us Jesus to be our Savior, to pour out your love upon us. Father, thank you. Just as we meet together this morning, as we look at your words, help us to hear, help us to understand, help us to draw closer to you, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Now, I've lost my clicker. Two seconds. Good morning, boys and girls. Any boys and girls down there this morning? Who's young at heart? Who actually is young? Good morning, boys and girls. Hello. Can I ask you a question? Who likes to play games? Anybody here like to play games? No? Maybe it should be who likes to play a PlayStation game. Would that be better? Who, whenever they're in the car, plays a game? And who plays a game called... I spy with my little eye. Have you ever played that? No? Yes? Look, you're very shy this morning. I think you're all still half asleep. So I'll tell you what, let's play a game. Let's get you woke up. I spy with my little eye something beginning with the letter L. Jack, do you see my notes? Well done. Was that an easy one? Bit obvious, was it? Yeah. Okay, let's try another one. I spy with my little eye something beginning with the letter M. No guesses? Just shout. M. Somebody said masks. Uh -uh. Somebody said microphone. Well done. Microphone. That's a really simple game, isn't it? It's a bit obvious sometimes. You know, some games make you have to think, make you have to search for clues if you play something like Cluedo. You know, something else that makes us search at times is the Bible, boys and girls. Sometimes things aren't very clear in it. Sometimes it's really confusing. I wonder if you've ever read the Bible and you've scratched your head and you thought, what is going on? I tell you something, see the adults who are around you? They definitely have read the Bible and scratched their head and said, what's going on? The Bible at times can be hard to understand. Now, boys and girls, have you, as you've been going out to Sunday school these past weeks, we've been starting to look at a book in the Bible called Isaiah. And sometimes in Isaiah, you do scratch your head. You see, the book of Isaiah times, it's not very happy. It can be a very sad book. There's lots of doom and gloom in it. There's lots of really horrible things happening. You see, God's people, and in the uh, they've got two names. They're, 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 they can't even get on. They're fighting, and they've dis divided themselves into two. And as they fight... God warns them that there's bad things coming because they haven't obeyed him. And you keep on thinking, what will happen next? Well, boys and girls, see last week, whenever I was doing the Bible reading, at the very end of it, there was something said. And it's one of those situations where you might scratch your head and think, what's going on? So let me show you a verse that comes from Isaiah chapter 6, uh, which we read last week. It's verse 13. But as for the terebinth and the oak leaf stumps, when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump 
in the land. Sound confusing? Yeah? It is confusing. Now, I have to admit, okay, who's heard of an oak tree? Boys and girls, oak's really good to burn your fire when it's dry. Burns a long time, it's really good wood. Who's heard of the terebinth tree? Anybody? I haven't either. Believe it or not, it is related to pistachio trees and pistachio nuts, although it doesn't produce them, but it's within the same family. There you are, there's a bit of useless knowledge for you this morning, boys and girls, if you ever get asked that. But you might sort of think about that, you might sort of scratch your head and go, what on earth is Isaiah going on about? Well, you see, the book of Isaiah, it is at the start so much doom and gloom that God was trying to give the people a little bit of hope. Now, that yellow face kind of stands out a wee bit, doesn't it? It's different because it's yellow. It's also different because it's smiling and all the other faces around it are sad. Isaiah wanted the people to realize, and God wanted them to realize, and that's why he told us to Isaiah, that there was hope that something good was going to come. And that's why he said that so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. And he's going to tell them some amazing and incredible news. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. But boys and girls, before we do that, I need your help. Can you help me? Parents, can you give them a nudge and see they're awake this morning? Who likes to sing? No? You're very quiet this morning. How about if I told you we're going to sing a nice upbeat song called My Lighthouse? Who knows that? Who likes My Lighthouse? Yeah, it's a lovely song. It's all about God and it's about Jesus, about light shining and about how he loves us. So let's stand and let's sing My Lighthouse because being a light in the world is what God calls us to be. So on your feet, don't be shy. And we'll start the video and let's sing My Lighthouse. wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go Questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh, oh. 
Boys and girls, I said about God wanting to give the people hope and about what he had, was going to tell them. So I'm going to read some of those words. So let us turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. And let's hear what God's word says. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Just as we have read God's word, let us pause. Let us come before him and let us pray. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you this morning for your word. Thank you that we have the freedom to gather to read your word out loud and to, to look at what it says to us and to explore it. Lord, you're a great God who loves us and you have sent Jesus to be the light in this world, to be our lighthouse. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for your blessings upon us. And as we have brought our gifts and offerings to you this morning, we ask that you would take them and use them to your glory and to your honor. Lord, we know we live in a world that doesn't acknowledge you, in a world that doesn't love you, in a world that's full of sin and hatred. And Father, people are nasty to each other. People are horrible to each other. And there are so many places around this world where there's trouble. Sometimes, Father, it's very obvious. Sometimes it's not so much. We pray for your love to flow around this world, to change this world. Lord, we think of the, the standoffs at the minute in Ukraine and Russia. We think of the tension that's just there. We think of all the different world leaders as they try to talk and, and, and to, to bring peace. But Father, we know that the only thing that brings peace, true peace, is your love. So we ask for your love to infuse that situation. We ask for your love to just to be present and to influence, that people would step back and think before they act, think before they talk. They would realize that they're not showing love. And Lord, that would change how they do things. Lord, at times we, we think 
more of ourselves than, than what we ought to. Sometimes we think we are better than others. Sometimes we think, oh, at least I'm not like that. We forget, Father, that we are all your creation, that we are all your children, and that you love all of us. Father, help us to show that love to others. Help us not to judge and point fingers, but to come alongside people, to help them where they are, to, to see what their needs are, and to, to walk with them and encourage them, to pray with them. And where we can, Father, to bring that practical help and support. Because we know that's what your son Jesus did whenever he was here on earth. He loved people exactly where he found them and exactly whatever situations they were in. And he just showed them love. Father, help us to do the same. Help us to bring your love. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Boys and girls and all the adults, I'm going to ask you a question. I wonder, have you ever thought about your name? If we can get that to go. You want to step up the first slide? Have you ever thought about your name? How did you get your name? Did you get your name because mum and dad really liked it? Did you get your name because... Mum and dad were really stuck and I have a list. Did you get your name because it's a family name and it was passed on to you? Did you get maybe a middle name because it belongs to somebody else in the family and you got it as well? I'll let you in on a little secret. My middle name is a very unusual name. It's Par, P-A-R-R. And I got that because it was my granny's maiden name. Sometimes you get names because you're passing it on. So I wonder, boys and girls and adults, have you ever thought about your name and where it came from? And what does it mean? Names are so important in the Bible. Names mean so much. And I I think we've lost that understanding. You see, a long time ago in the Bible, even before Isaiah writes, in part of Exodus, there's that question about names. And as God spoke to Moses and was trying to get Moses to lead his people out of Egypt, Moses said, "What this is, and he, Moses asked, what will I tell the people your name is? Who will I say has sent me? God replied, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. People wanted to know what your name was. And in those days, boys and girls, people wanted to know, what do you call your God? Because, you see, they had this idea that people's gods who they worshipped had secret names. And if you knew the secret name of the gods, you you were in there. You were really important. And And that would really help you in different situations. And and even Moses said, well, whenever the people ask, who sent me, who will I say? And God answered in that way. And then even Pharaoh, whenever Moses went to see Pharaoh, said, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord. He said that because he wanted to know, what is your God's name? God doesn't hide his name for us. God is simply called God, because he is the one who is all-powerful, all-knowing, the one who made the world around us, the one who knows everything about us. He knows so much about us, but here's the really shocking thing. God wants you to know him. I wonder if you've ever thought about that. God wants you to know him. That's why in this bit of Isaiah, you have the names of God. See, God wants us to know him because God wants us to know that he loves us and he cares for us and that he has a plan for our lives. So 
God gives Isaiah all these different names which he uses in this passage. So we're just going to have a wee quick look at some of those names. Child. If you follow the breadcrumbs in Isaiah, if, you, if you're a detective and if you follow the clues, you know that God is saying through Isaiah that there is a child coming. Somebody who's going to be very, very different. Now, we're living so many thousand years later, and we know who Isaiah is talking about. Isaiah is talking about... Oh, come on, you're not all that shy. Who's he talking about? Jesus. He's talking about Jesus coming. Being a child. But he also uses the name son. This child is not just any child. This child is not just under the masses. This child is going to be God's son. More than that, he uses the name Wonderful Counselor. God's people are used to people being judges or counselors over them. They're used to people they go to whenever they can't make a decision and saying, okay, we need a judgment here. There's a whole book devoted to that called The Judges. Some of those people are good. Some of those people are not so good. Some of those people will take money to give you a decision that you want. They're not honorable. But God says that there's coming a wonderful counselor. Somebody who is mighty God. God was saying that this child is my son. He's a wonderful counselor, but he is also me. That can be really confusing at times. We sometimes, and we quite often talk about Trinity. We talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we talk about how God is one, but how God is three. Now, boys and girls, again, if you think that's confusing, and you think you're confused by it, trust me, the adults are even more confused by it. Because the more you try to figure it out and try to think it through in your head, the more you get confused. But we need to realize that God says there is me, there's God, and there's my son who's part of me, and there's the Holy Spirit. But this child who is coming, my son, is also me. He is the everlasting father. You see, for God's people, so many things have come and gone. So many things have been promised to them and then they've lost it, boys and girls. They've lost their adults because they haven't obeyed God. But God wants them to know that he never changes. He is constant in their lives and he always will be constant in their lives. And that he is the prince of peace. These people are living in a land which is full of war fighting. They've been told that their cities are going to be destroyed. They're told that most of them are going to be carried off and they're going to become slaves. Lots of them will die. That's going to be really hard and difficult. But God then tells them that I am the Prince of Peace. Now those people misunderstand that because when they think of peace, they think of the wars, the physical wars that are around them. They forget that there's an even bigger war raging. It's the war between right and wrong, between good and evil, between God and Satan. They forget that Satan is trying to destroy God's creation, destroy the world, turn away from God to follow him instead. There's sin in our lives, which is a barrier between us and God. But God is going to send a child who will be the prince of peace. A child who will be the one who will fix things or restore our relationship with God. 
A child who, whenever he grows up, will come to a cross and die on that cross and rise again so we can have our sins forgiven. And all of this is promised so far in advance as we start to read the book of Isaiah. I wonder how you feel this morning. And I ask everybody that, regardless of age. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you worried? Do you have the weight of the world on your shoulders, as we say? Do you think that things are hopeless and you wonder where we're going? We can worry about all those things. God this morning wants to give us hope. His hope. His, the realization that no matter what is going on in this world around us, that he is always there for us. That's why he gave names to Isaiah to share with the people. Names which so many years later we get to read. Names which we just take as names. And we forget the meaning of them. We forget that they are full of promise, full of hope, full of assurance. I trust that this morning that you will go home and maybe start to read that part of Isaiah again. Isaiah is a wonderful book. It's quite often called the fifth gospel because so much of it talks about Jesus. So much of it is about the promise of Jesus coming. And yeah, we don't get that. We miss that. We think that names are just names. We forget that there's meaning. I just pray this morning that you would go home and read that passage again. And that as you read it, you would think about those names and realize that there's a promise in there for you. There's a promise in there for me. There's a promise there for all of us. And if you think about that last name, Prince of Peace, the promise that God wants us to have his peace. Peace that we can't really explain. Peace that maybe is beyond us. But peace that we can have because of what Jesus has done for us. May God bless you this morning. Let's pause. Let's pray. Father, again this morning, Thank you for the, the, the promises of your words. Lord, help us to understand them. I know we struggle at times with, with, with getting to grasp with what it means. Part of that, Lord, is because we are so far removed from when it was written. And we need to think in the way the people of the time thought. But Lord, quite often it's just simply because we just scratch the surface of your word and we don't really dig any deeper. Father, from the very youngest to the very oldest of us here this morning, help us to want to dig deeper into your word, to look at what it's saying, and to try to understand it so we can grow closer to you each day. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. The closing piece that we have, again, is a modern piece. It's one that we have sung before. I've got a different video for it because it's got better words on it it's entitled your your name is power now you may not know this song or it, it, it may not be the sort of song that you like to sing that's okay but just read the words see what they are saying realize that in the name of jesus there is power realize that he wants us to realize that power and be personal in our lives let me encourage you to stand. And if you want to sing, sing. If you just want to listen to the words, just listen to them. And then at that, I will pronounce the and then we will have tea and coffee. But let's sing this piece together. You're the only answer to the darkness. 
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Folks, thanks for joining with us this morning as we have worshipped together for our family service. Sunday school is back on again next week, boys and girls. Um, And if you'd like, there's now tea and coffee after the service. But if you don't, that's not a problem. Uh, and trust that you're back again next week to worship with us. Take care and God bless. Mm-hmm.